Amen. Are you ready for the word? God bless you then. Let's go to the word. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. I want to talk to you about honoring God. I want to talk to you today about honoring God. Hallelujah. And we're going to begin uh, in 1 Samuel. This may turn into a series. We'll see how far we get today. But, excuse me, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 27. If you have the NIV, let's read through the NIV, please, if that's what you have. Okay? All right, verse 27. Now a man of God came to Eli and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Did I not clearly reveal myself to your ancestors' family when they were in Egypt on a pharaoh? Keep moving, please. I chose your ancestor out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to go up to my altar, to burn incense, and to wear an ephod in my presence. I also gave your ancestors, family, all the food offerings presented by the Israel. In other words, God is saying, I've been good to you. That's what he said. I've been extremely gracious. I've been very good. I've made a way for you. I've looked out for you. I have provided for you. I've been good to you. Can you testify? Is that your testimony? Is that your witness? Amen. Everybody say, God, you've been good to me. So that's what God is saying to Eli and his family. I've been good to you. Okay, let's go on. Verse, verse 29. Why do you scorn my sacrifice and offering that I prescribed for my dwelling? Why do you honor your sons more than me by fattening yourselves on the choice parts of every offering made by my people Israel? In other words, I've been good to you. How come you haven't been good to me? I've been good to you. How come you're dishonoring me. I gave you a responsibility as Eli and your sons, you were supposed to take care of the temple and all of the things pertaining to the worship and the offerings that I required. I took care of you. I did have some expectations. I did give you a responsibility. You were to lead the people and help the people in their worship and in the offerings. But Instead of doing that, you, you dishonored me. Let's go on to the next verse, please. Therefore, the Lord, the God of Israel, declares, I promised that members of your family would minister before me forever. But now, the Lord declares, far be it from me. Those who honor me, I will honor but those who despise me will be disdained. Those who honor me, I will honor. Those who despise me will be disdained. Seems like this business of honoring God is serious, right? It seems like God really, really attaches a lot of importance to his people honoring him. And so it's important that we talk about this today. Go on to the next verse, please. The time is coming when I will cut short your strength and the strength of your priestly house so that no one in it will reach old age. And you will see distress in my dwelling. Although good will be done to Israel, no one in your family line will ever reach old age. Every one of you that I do not cut off from serving at my altar, I will spare only to destroy your sight and sap your strength, and all your descendants will die in the prime of life. And what happens to your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, will be a sign to you. They will both die on the same day. Well, 
Everybody said, thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Come on, raise your hand and say, thank God for Jesus. Amen? And if you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, if I were you, I will get to know him as my personal Lord and Savior because he's the only one that can deliver us from the just judgment of God upon sin. One more time. Say, Jesus, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But let's look at this and, and, and quickly make some comments. One of the, one of the questions God asked uh, Eli was, why do you scorn my sacrifice? Again, what was Eli and his son supposed to be doing? They were priests. And God had chosen them and they were supposed to be ministering unto the Lord in the temple of the Lord in the manner in which the Lord had requested for his glory. He gave them the instructions. They knew what they were supposed to do. It was not a matter of ignorance. It was a matter of not taking seriously what God had told them to do and not being conscious of who this God was that they were serving. Now, they did what they did in the tabernacle. What is the equivalent of the tabernacle for us? Well, it's the church. Because it is the church that God has established to be the temple today of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Individually and collectively, we are the church. And God has given us clear instructions. The Bible says concerning all of us now, we are all priests. Amen? Eli, his sons, were chosen to be priests, to minister unto the Lord. In the new covenant, we're told in 1 Peter chapter 2, you are a royal priesthood or a kingdom of priests. So in the new covenant, every one of us is a priest. And every one of us is to fulfill the priestly function of worshiping God and glorifying God in the way that he has instructed us to do. Now, what has God said concerning the church? Well, there are a number of things he's told us, right? He's told us, one of, that for, for example, that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Now, we're not ignorant of that. The priests are not to forsake the assembling of themselves together. In other words, don't forsake the gathering of the believers. That's clear, right? We're not ignorant of that. We're not to do what as priests, we're not to forsake the, the assembly. The, and that simply means don't stay away from the gathering when the church or the body of Christ, when the people of God come together to worship, God wants you to be there. He doesn't want you staying home to, 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 to do the laundry. He wants you to gather with the people of God to worship him. That's what the priests are supposed to be doing, right? He says concerning us, we are to love one another. Anybody ignorant of that? No, it's clear. We're to do what? As the believers, we are to love one another. Correct? He says we are to serve one another. He says we are to forgive one another. So, as priests in the new covenant, we ought to be treating what God has instructed us to do with great reverence. The mistake that Eli and his sons did, in particular his sons, is that they took this assignment which God had given them which was a sacred assignment from him, which they should have approached with reverence and godly fear because they understood who God is. Holy, holy, 
holy. Thou art God Almighty. Isaiah had a vision and saw him and when, uh, when, when uh, saw his glory and when Isaiah saw his glory, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6, I believe, he fell on his face and he said, Oh God, I'm a man of unclean lips. He saw the angels, the cherubim, the seraphim surrounding the throne of God day and night. Holy, holy, holy. Priests of the new covenant. This is the God we serve. He is, come on, say, holy, holy, holy. We are to approach him and we are to approach our service to him with reverence and godly fear. We are not to treat our ministry unto the Lord, our priestly assignment, we ought not to treat it as common and ordinary, something to play with. This is serious. God has chosen us to honor him. Is, are we all okay in my Presbyterian church? Amen? But that's, that's the spirit with which we're supposed to come. But you know what? They didn't do that. Um, Eli and his sons, if you read the whole story, they, they were the priests and they were sleeping with the women. They were the priests and God had taken care of them, but there was a certain part of the sacrifice, the, the fat, amen, that was to be offered to God because God Consider that special. He wanted that for him. It was a sweet smell in his nostrils. And while they, they were well taken care of, he said, now this portion is for me. But what did they do? They took care of themselves first. They took the best for themselves and offered God what was left. Now, hear me, we're talking about honoring God. And one of the things we've got to realize is that you cannot honor God unless you're giving him the first and the best. When we give God our leftovers, or when we give God second place, we have dishonored him. By definition, God must be first. Isn't that so? By definition, God must receive the best. Not, God can never be second and be honored. God can never get less than our best and be honored by that. You follow me? Now, the truth is, we don't do this perfectly, but that should be what we're aiming for. That should be what we're aiming for. If we understand the importance of honoring God, then what should we be aiming for? We should be aiming for always giving him first and always giving him the best. That should be the goal. That should be the intent of the New Testament priests. Never allow yourself to be content with simply giving God what's left. Now, God had a problem with Eli. Now, Eli wasn't the one who was really doing this stuff. It was his sons. But God said to Eli, you are dishonoring me. And why was Eli dishonoring God? Because Eli was permitting it. He talked. He told his sons. Read it. So he, told, he said, no, this is not right. You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. But he still 
didn't stop it. He had the authority to stop it. He didn't use that authority. He allowed them to continue to treat the things of God as though they were common and ordinary rather than sacred and holy. And God said, because you have allowed your sons to behave this way, you, Eli, have dishonored me. Church, God takes honor seriously. We are priests in the new covenant. Let us not make the same mistakes that Eli and his children made. Let us remember that God always must have the first, and God always must have the best. So whenever we serve God, in whatever way we're serving God, it is an offering unto God. Hey, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service of what? Worship. And so whatever we offer unto God, whether we are ushers, whether we are greeters, whether we are preachers, whether we are singers, in the body of Christ, we, 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 our service to God becomes an offering to God. Let's make sure that in our serving of God, we're offering God our best. Hmm? Say amen. amen. Say, Lord, Lord help, us help us as New Testament priests yes. to honor you by always, always putting you first and giving you our best. Now, because they dishonored God, God said the promise he had made to them had been forfeited. Because when he gave them the privilege of being priests, he promised that he would bless them. But he was blessing them based upon them fulfilling the privilege of the priestly ministry. But since they had proved themselves totally unfaithful, God said, I will no longer honor you because you have not honored me. Now, the consequences were, were grave. God literally says to them, because you have not honored me, no one in your family will live long. Raise your head one more time and say, thank you, God, for Jesus. <laughs> okay. But the principle we must still take seriously. Hear me. There's a promise in the Old Testament connected to the commandment of honoring your fathers and your mothers. And that promise is repeated in the New Covenant because Paul says, remember, this is the only commandment with promise. What, what did God say? He says, you honor your father and your mother, and you will do what? He says, you will live long. One of the blessings associated with honoring God is life. And God, listen, if ever you meet someone, a godly person who, who has lived long and is strong, know that God has honored that person. Are you hearing me? One of the principles of longevity is to learn how to honor God and to honor those who God tells you to honor. Okay? So God says that we should honor our parents. Isn't that so? God also says that you should honor those who he has set over you in the church. 
Let's just say that. God says you should honor the civil authorities. Let's just say that. God says you should honor elderly people. Yeah, in the book of, of Leviticus, God says, listen, you should stand before the elderly. You should honor the person who got gray hair and whose face. So some of us need to stop dyeing our hair. <laughs> so people can honor us. <laughs> let the gray show, man, let the wrinkles show. <laughs> but here's the reality. Listen, when God says honor me, it involves also honoring all those whom God has said you should honor. And there are certain people and certain positions that God says we should honor. Hmm? If we fail to honor those whom God says we should honor, Unfortunately, we open the door to the enemy for things to happen that were not necessary. All of us know somebody who has died prematurely because they didn't listen to their parents or they didn't listen to their pastors or they didn't obey the civil authorities. When God says honor so that your life will be long, he's telling you that the principle is, uh, of honor is there to bless you. Yes. It's there for your protection. Yes. And when you ignore it and violate it, you're going to expose yourself to harm. Yes. Not always resulting in physical death, but to harm. Yes. When you fail to take seriously the commandment to honor God and those who he sets in authority over you. How many of you know someone who you know, if they had listened maybe to their parents or listened to their pastors or listened to someone who was in authority over them, they might be alive today or not in jail today or you follow? You know anybody? You know some of those people? Yeah, yeah. Some of you, 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 yeah, all of us know them. So hear me. This command is for our protection. I hear me. So make it your, your goal to always honor God. It was just so the way you honor God simply is always put God first and always give God the best. And of course, obey him. What God tells you to do, you ought to do it. You honor him that way. But don't think that honoring God simply means responding to God directly. Honoring God includes honoring those that God has put in positions of authority over you. And again, your parents, your, your elders in the church, God tells us to honor them. The elderly, God says we should honor them for the fact, just by the fact that they're elderly. And he connects the, what you do in regards to them to himself when you read that passage in, 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 in the book of Leviticus. So here, I mean, parents, one of the things you really need to be doing is teaching your children to honor God, to honor authority, and to honor the elderly. It bothers me when I see, you know, we got elderly people present. The children sitting down, the boys sitting down, the girls sitting down, young, strong people. And an elderly person is there. First of all, they don't even acknowledge to say hello. You know, they don't even acknowledge the presence of the elderly. They just, I mean, it's like, you know. When it's time to serve food, I'm being practical. We're gathered. You got elderly people sitting down and you're giving all the children and the younger people the opportunity to get served before you've taken care of or shown respect to the elderly. That's not honoring God. That's dishonoring God. The people in the world may not may think that's old-fashioned. Okay, we're teaching our children to be what? 
to, to speak, to be afraid of no one. Fine, keep teaching them to be confident, but teach them to be respectful too. Amen. Teach them to be respectful, to say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. May I help you to get up and give their seat to an elderly person when an elderly person is present. If they're in the bus and an elderly person comes in, they're sitting down on their, 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 their cell phone. Get up, man. Let the woman or the elderly man have a seat. God has given you so strong. Are you hearing me? Okay. For the second time, I got to move quickly. But I, I, again, I've said we need to honor God, right? And I said, in, in short, I'm trying to make it brief. To honor God simply means put God first, give God your best, obey God, follow God's instructions. Amen? When you're not giving God first, when you're not giving God the best, when you're putting your children, your family before God, when you're putting your children, your family, your job, your career, whatever it is, when you're putting that before God, you are dishonoring God. All right? Everybody say God first. God always gets the best. God before me. God before my family. God before my children. God before my husband. God before my wife. God before my pastor. <laughs> Say God first, and God gets the best. Let that be our attitude. Amen? In everything we do, we do it unto the Lord because he is, he is the only God. Holy, holy, holy. All right? So we must keep that in mind. But honoring God also means honoring those that God has put in positions of authority. In your home, your parents, in the church, your pastors and elders, in society, is civil government. And those structures are put there for your good. They're there to protect you. And when you ignore them and you violate them, then there can be very serious consequences, one of which may be a shortened life. Okay? Now, there's... There is a promise, though, right? God says, he who honors me, I will honor. Now, that's good news, right? So if I decide and you decide, you know, we're going to honor God in a way that God has instructed us to. God said, I'm going to honor you. Hallelujah. Now, how does God honor People. Well, there are just a lot of ways by which God honors us, but one of the ways by which God honors us that is found in the text in 1 Samuel is God said to Eli, he says, I blessed you and I gave you and your family access. You could come in and go out. You could come in and go out. Amen? Listen to me. One of the, way, one of the ways God honors us is when he, in Christ, opens the door for us to come boldly into his presence, and God answers, honors us by answering prayers. Amen. When you ask God for something, and you bring your need, and God answers, God has just honored you. Amen. How many of you know God doesn't have to do it? Amen. He's not forced to, right? But he chooses to, to answer your prayer, he's honoring you. If he chooses to confirm the words that you speak. I don't know about you, but there have been times when I have spoken and God honored it by bringing it to pass. Anybody has ever had that experience? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you know, you, 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 I remember the, not too long ago I was coming back from Liberia and there was a young lady who was a part of one of our churches, but she worked. She worked at the, um, at the airport, and they were hired. There was a new management taking over, and they had already said that they were going to lay off all of these people. And so she was kind of nervous because, you know, concerning her job, her future. Uh, and I told her, you know what? You're God's child. 
and God is going to take care of you. Don't worry. So I, I said, but let me know what happened. So she sends me a, a message by WhatsApp. And she says, oh, Bishop, they, they laid all of us off and they sent me home. I said, God giving you time for vacation. I said, just go ahead and enjoy your rest. You needed a break, you know, because God has already taken care of you. Don't worry. Just enjoy your vacation. Amen. After a month or so, she rose him back. So I've been rehired. I'm back at work. I said, you see? Okay. So again, I showed that example because I didn't really pray. I just spoke. Correct? God honored me by, by causing those words which I spoke in that situation to come to pass. So one of the ways God will honor you is by, by causing the very words you speak to come to pass. Amen? God honors you by blessing the work of your hands. God honors you by Lifting you up. Many of you, you're the, you might be the youngest in your family, yet you're the one they run to. I mean, they look to you. They want your advice. They want your input. They want to consult you before they make any decision. What has happened? Like Joseph, God has done what? Honored you, lifted you up, made you the deliverer, so to speak, and the, the savior, so to speak, in your family. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. One of the ways God will honor some of us is with long life. Amen. We'll live long and we'll be strong. Amen. How many of you said, God, I want that honor too? <laughs> Father, I pray you honor every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl in this house who will honor you. I ask that you honor them with long life, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let them live long and let them be strong all the days of their life. Let every man who honors you here, oh God, be honored by you with a long life and gray hair. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up now and I'm going to summarize what I'm about to say. I may in subsequent messages develop this. Practically, how are you going to honor God? I, I've said, honor him by giving to him what? Always making him first, the best, do what he says, right? Now, look at your life. You got three things. You hear this all the time. You got time. You got what? Talent. And you got what? What do you have? Time, talent, treasure. Let's be practical. We can talk about this stuff and it's in the air. But let's bring it down where the rubber meets the road. How do you honor God? Well, if I'm going to honor God, i got to ask myself, how am I going to honor God with my time? How am I going to give God my first and my best with my time? My talent. How am I going to give God my first and best regarding my talent? And then my treasure, my money my finances, my physical material resources. How am I going to give God my first and my best with my money? Okay, let's be practical. Well, let me ask you something. When you are scheduling your time, where do you begin? Do you begin with God or do you begin with all the things you need to do? And they say, oh, I don't got time to go to church. I don't have time to serve. I don't have time to read my Bible. I don't have time to pray. Wait a minute. If you began with God first, you certainly would have had time. There may be some other things you have had to leave out. You might end up saying, well, I don't have time to spend two hours watching TV. So I'm going to drop that. I don't have time to get a second job I don't really need. So I'm not going to add that to my schedule. Are you hearing me? I don't have time to be on my phone all day. 
But, but we don't begin there. We begin with everything we want. And then at the end, we say, I don't have time. So listen, you're dishonoring God when you're beginning with yourself and your wants when it comes to your time. Let's honor God, priests. Let's not be like Hophni and, and Phineas. Let's honor God with our time. Begin your schedule by scheduling time for being with God each day. It can be in the morning, it can be in the afternoon. It doesn't have to be the first thing you do in the day, but let it be the first thing you schedule. And then you build everything else around it. Spend time in the Word. Spend time in prayer daily. Make that non-negotiable. Because if you don't, I guarantee you, the enemy will find ways to steal that time or to get you and me doing something else. How many of you know that you're guilty? Come on, raise your hand. Tell the truth. I'm raising my hand because I'm guilty too. So maybe if your pastor is honest, you can be honest. Come on, raise your hand. And let's all be honest. You got to confess your faults now to one another. So we're confessing our faults to one another here. So no, seriously, begin. If God's going to have the first and best because you want to honor him with your time, then you got to begin the schedule by scheduling time with God daily. Build everything else around that. Don't fill your day and then try to find time for God. And then every week, schedule time to do what God told you to do, to gather together with believers, to fellowship. We don't gather together just to worship God, which we do, but to fellowship, to be with one another. You can't do that from your room. Lying on your bed. Doing a number of things in between while you listen. Or listening in between the things you're doing. Yeah, some of you laughing, but you know that's true. Now, do you really think that's honoring God? Come on, guys, let's not play games. Do you really think you're honoring God when you choose to stay home, lie on your bed, and be eating, running to the refrigerator, <laughs> while the service of worship, do you really think you're honoring God? You're not. Come on, let's be honest. Let's stop making all these excuses. They're not true. We're doing what Hophni and Phineas did. We're putting our own self before God. We're eating what belongs to God. After God has blessed us already. Preaching better than you're listening. Okay. So you begin by scheduling time daily and with God in prayer, in the word, schedule time weekly to gather together with the people of God, to love them, to serve them, to bless them, and to be blessed. Amen. That is the will of God. Those are his instructions. We're not ignorant of it. We can choose to obey or disobey. We can be like Hophni and Phineas, or we can be like Samuel who replaced them. Okay? What's the next thing we talk about? Talent. Come on. Your gifts, your natural gifts and abilities, and then the ones that you have acquired through learning. Who, who, who gave you all that? Who's the source of them? Has God been good to you? Yeah, because he was good to you. That's why you have that. It was his gift. Now, if you're going to honor him with your gifts, your talents, your abilities, what are the physical and natural, what do you need to do? Give him first, give him best. So you need to be asking yourself, what gifts, what abilities that have, have God given me? And how am I using this to honor him first? Amen? Amen. Talk to God. Look at yourself and say, you know what? I'm a strong man. I'm in my 30s or my 40s. I'm not old yet, but I got muscles. I got energy. I can lift some chairs. 
And so after service, instead of letting the women have to move chairs, I'm going to use this ability I have, these muscles, and I'm going to help lift some chairs. How many of you know you're honoring God with something he's given you? You got mine. Some of you can write well. How can you use that to serve God's people and to serve God in your community? Do you think about that? Or do you only think about how do I use my gifts, my abilities to make money? No, ask yourself first, because God must be first, how do I use my gifts and abilities to honor God, to serve God, to serve his people, to serve in this community for the glory of God? Besides just supporting yourself. And if, if each of us would really take that seriously, I believe each of us will find ways that we can use our natural and spiritual gifts, the ones we're born with, with, with the ones we've acquired. We can find ways that we can put those to use in a way that will honor God and be for his glory. Do that. All right? And then the last one is the one nobody wants me to touch on, but I'm going to touch on it. <laughs> I, told, I, told you about the, I told you about the guy who was being baptized. And before he was baptized, before he was put under the water, the preacher said, and this was a comic, thing, you know, they, so they showed one, 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 one screen and, and the preacher is telling him, now everything that goes under the water belongs to God. And so... The preacher is telling him that he's getting ready to be baptized. In the next frame, he's under the water, but his wallet in his hand is up. <laughs> You're laughing, but that's exactly what many of you have done. Oh, God, I love you. Oh, God, I love you. But your wallet, your bank account, You want to keep that for yourself. No, guys. The whole principle of tithing in Malachi 3 where God says, bring ye all the tithe. If you read that, God said, where is my honor? It wasn't the money. God doesn't need your money per se. But it's the honor that you ascribe to him when you put him first with your giving. We're not honoring God when we spend our resources on ourselves, our children, and we do everything we want to do. Then, if there's something left, but maybe we take a small portion of the small left over. Come on, we're dishonoring our God. We're dishonoring him. Listen, we've got to honor him in our giving Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen? When you get your paycheck or whatever you're doing, before you budget how much you're going to spend on Starbucks, how much you're going to spend at the restaurants, how much you're going to spend at, on cable, mm, how much you're going to spend at... Uh, TJ Maxx, I guess that's where she shops. <laughs> Don't worry, girl, I shop at TJ Maxx too, so I, I know exactly what you're talking about. One of these days we'll run into each other there. And there's nothing wrong with going to TJ Maxx. Just don't put that before. Don't put that before your God. Don't make that the first thing you do when you get money. How are you going to honor God? The principle of the tithe is the principle of honoring God. And God is saying, this is how you honor me. I could ask for everything at one time. But all I'm asking for you to honor me is give me the first fruit. And here's the first fruit. Give me 10%. And if you do that, you're honoring God. You say, do I have to tithe? No, you don't have to. You don't have to honor God. That's a choice. But if you want to honor him, this is how you do it. You're free not to if you choose not to. He's not going to kill you. 
but just know you're not honoring him in your giving when you're spending everything first on yourself and withholding the first fruit. I got real quiet now, I can feel. Some of you who are laughing, you're not laughing anymore. <laughs> no, but seriously, here's the fact, guys. Naked you came into this world, and you're going out of this world naked. You're not going to take one penny. And so the Bible says we should remind those who are rich in this world not to put their trust in uncertain riches. Amen? But to put their trust in the living God. He tells you to use your money to lay up treasures in heaven to be rich towards God. All the money we have in the world cannot buy one inch, square inch of territory in heaven. So this is what we're supposed to do with our treasure if we want to honor God. Just like you schedule time with God first, you schedule your money for God first. Amen? You set aside a portion of your income. And you say, God, this is my first, this is my best. I'm honoring you with it. Hallelujah. Now, when you do that, you're expressing gratitude to God because God is the one you're saying who gave this to me. You are expressing faith in God because you're saying, God, I'm not trusting my money. I'm trusting you. You're going to take care of me. Amen. And David said, I've been young, I've been old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And now I can say I've been young and I'm almost old. But I haven't seen the righteous forsaken nor the CC. Listen, God will take care of you. A number of years ago when I was in college, God told me, DJ, when you have a need, the need is met. And when you have faith that God will take care of you, then you're able to be generous. You're able to give. The reality is many of us are not generous with, in giving to God because we don't have faith. We don't trust God. And if you're not trusting God, you are dishonoring him. Because you're saying, God, I can't count on you to take care of me. No greater insult can I make or you can make than to say to God, I cannot trust you to take care of me. Therefore, I'm going to hold on to everything I have because if I gave to you and I gave to your work, you're going to not take care of me. Amen? Amen? Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit who is present will open the eyes of our understanding. And I pray that every person here, every man, every woman, every boy and girl, that you would grant them even now the grace to make the decision to honor you to honor you, Lord, with their time, to honor you with their talent, to honor you with their treasure. And even as we do so, Lord, we know the promise that you have made is that you will honor us. Hallelujah. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you learn something? All right. So let's not be hearers of the word. Let's be what? Doers of the word. And so we have an opportunity right now to do the word when it comes to our giving. Every week when we come together, we have an opportunity to worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings to put him first. Let's do that right now. Let's put him first as the Lord has blessed you, as the Lord has prospered you. Everybody cannot give the same amount, but you know how the Lord has blessed you. You know how the Lord has prospered you. So in accordance to his blessing and prosperity upon your life, Please now, let's worship him with our tithes and our offerings. And here are the ways that you can give. If you need an offering envelope, you can raise your hand and our ushers will give you an offering envelope. But you can also give electronically. If you're watching online, we invite you to participate even now in this time of worship. Worship him with your best. Worship him with your first. Honor God in your giving and he will honor you in Jesus' name. Amen.